Today we'll be looking at the art and life of painter Ted Harrison. Though he was considered a Canadian artist, he was actually born in England and moved to Canada to accept a teaching job at the Hartlepool School of Art. As a painter, Harrison was inspired by the beautiful nature in a region of Canada called the Yukon. Go ahead and locate the Yukon on this map. There it is. The Yukon is a northwestern region of Canada. It's known for its mountainous and wild landscapes, beautiful lakes, colorful skies and sunsets. Another thing that the region is known for are the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis. A naturally occurring light show of gases and solar winds in the sky. They're actually visible from many places toward the top of the globe in the high regions of the Arctic. Amazing. With all of this in mind, let's take some time to look at some of Harrison's landscape paintings. While we watch this slideshow, I'm gonna put on a little music and I want you to take out a pencil and a piece of paper and take some notes. Here are some things I want you looking for as you take notes about his work. Please think about style, color, composition, how he used the space on his canvas, and how it makes you feel. compare notes. I noticed that his style is landscape painting, meaning that he paints scenes in nature. They're for the most part not very realistic, though I can recognize certain, certain elements. They're almost abstract, and his shapes and lines are very flat, and they're very bold, almost with a childlike quality, which I love. Every one of Harrison's landscapes also has a horizon line or the line that separates land and sky, or in this case, sea, sea and sky. I also notice that his paintings almost always have a sun and many, many lines or stripes in the sky that most likely represent those beautiful sunsets that we saw, or the aurora borealis. Finally, I want to make note of his use of color. It's so moving to me as a viewer. It almost takes my breath away. It can calm me, can make me feel a certain type of way. They're bold yet soft, and he has very intentional use of warm and cool colors. Remember, warm colors are the ones that almost make us feel hot inside, the yellows and oranges and reds, whereas the cool colors are the calming, lighter colors, the blues and purples and greens. He uses them very intentionally, oftentimes placing warm colors in the background or in the sky, and then cool colors down in the land regions or the foreground. Sometimes he does that, 
Sometimes he does it vice versa. Here are some quotes that I really appreciate. Painting, Harrison says, is part fantasy, part reality, and part abstraction. He also says that he paints from his mind, not from reality. It's a world of happiness and joy that transcends or goes beyond the normal world. He says that the dream world is best. I kind of agree. Now let's get started. For this project today, you're going to be making your own landscape art in the style, in the style of Ted Harrison. You're only going to need paper and pencil for today. We're just going to be working on some rough drafts and then a final draft of the sketch so that we're ready to paint or add color next week. All right, here we are at my workspace. So our goal today is to end up with a final draft of a sketch that you can use next week for painting or adding color to. Now, depending on what materials you have at home, anything will really work, uh, but that can help you guide your selection of paper. So for example, if I'm just gonna be using crayon to color my painting in or to color my drawing in, then I can just use standard cop copy paper. If you happen to have watercolors or acrylics, you can use a piece of construction paper, something a little heavier, or if you have it, watercolor paper. Really anything will work for this. Before we start on a final draft, we wanna make sure and do some thumbnail sketches. As an artist, I always like to make sure that I do multiple versions of a project before deciding on something permanently. So what I'm gonna have you do on a standard piece of copy paper or recycled paper, is to make four different drawings, all with very, very different compositions. We're just gonna make sure that each one has a sun, a horizon line, and some kind of stripes, kind of in the style of Harrison in the sky. All right, let's get started. So with my piece of copy paper, and I apologize if you can see my microphone cord. With my piece of copy paper, I'm gonna fold once vertically and once horizontally just to separate the page into quadrants. That way it gives me four equally sized kind of workspaces. And I like to separate them just so that I visually can see what's going on. Now you'll notice that for our demonstration here, I'm using a Sharpie. I want you to use a pencil. The only reason I'm using the Sharpie is so that you can see it on the screen. All right, so you're gonna get started Let's see, I'm gonna do this upside down. Put my son here. I really love Ted Harrison's lines in the sky. They almost sometimes remind me of like, eyeballs when he frames the sun in the way he does. So I'm gonna kind of make that style on this first one. Add something here, maybe a wisp. Be sure and add my horizon line. Your horizon line can really be anywhere in the composition. It can be in the lower third, kind of central, or it can be in the upper third. Let's see, let's go ahead and add a little more sky. Maybe like a magical offset mountain top. Then I'll give kind of a river here. Kind of create the illusion of perspective. And a couple more lines. So you're gonna make four very different compositions. And then when you're done with your compositions, I want you to take it to someone in your house and have a conversation with them. Do a little peer-to-peer -peer critique. Ask them for some feedback. Maybe you show them the slides that we just looked at. Show them some of Harrison's work. And then ask them for one criticism and one one good thing, one prop. Once you're done, I want you to select which one you're going to enlarge. For me, I think I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge this one here. I'm gonna fold this up so that I can see it really well and so that you can see it. And on my final paper, I'm gonna go ahead and redraw it. Here we go. 
I'll start with the horizon line. In this case, it's flat. It's not always flat, though. Maybe a range. Remember, your line quality is entirely up to you. This is all up to you. The only three things that I ask of you is to have a horizon line, stripes in the sky, and the sun. Other than that, you guys have the creative license. Let's see, I'll do a very small sun in the back. I want to create some movement for my viewer. I want my viewer's eye to kind of move around. I'm also making sure to add enough lines so that I can kind of create different tones or tints or shades when I add the color next week. There we go. And in the bottom two thirds, I'm going to try to recreate this, this river here. Let me give it a little perspective. So as it comes forward, maybe the mouth of the river gets wider. And then it gets more narrow and goes back. Add some hills. Another thing that we forgot to mention is that in some of Ted Harrison's work, he places a figure, either people or a house or a building or dogs. You can do that too. Entirely up to you. So again, your goal for today is to come up with a final draft drawing after doing your sketches of something that you are going to add color to or paint next week. Remember, please do it in pencil. Have fun. If you want to do a couple of rough drafts, you can even add color with crayon to those to kind of prepare so that we can mix paint next week. All right, guys, thanks for joining, and I will see you next week to add some color to these beautiful landscapes. Have fun and stay creative.